NZI is the oldest brand in New Zealand and in 2009 celebrates 150 years of business. The company has a rich historical record of progress from New Zealand's first indigenous insurance company to membership of a global financial service. New Zealand first became known to many countries through insurance. Policies issued by NZI were familiar in areas long before any other New Zealand export product. The company, therefore, paved the way for later progress in trade and diplomacy and established the name of New Zealand as synonymous with security, integrity and reliability. The NZI story is also the history of Auckland, of New Zealand, of 19th century colonialism, of 20th century nationalism and 21st century innovation, just as it is that of the character of the company and its individuals. It is a remarkable story of evolution, vision and having the commercial courage to change. The place of NZI in New Zealand history uh, has been to protect New Zealanders as we have done for the last 150 years. It's been able to prove itself, its viability, its uh, commitment to its clients and its customers and its employees. By 1858, Auckland was beginning to take a crude shape with a population of 9,000. Wooden buildings were closely spaced and the risk of fire was a daily concern and a regular reality. On May the 21st, 1859, less than 20 years after the Treaty of Waitangi, NZI came into being as the first underwriting company in the colony at the initiative of local lawyer Thomas Russell. It had the largest nominal capital of any company then existing in New Zealand. Yet the business was just as risky in those times as it is today. This artefact is from the stairway of NZI founder Thomas Russell's house. Clearly visible is a bullet mark. Cyrus Haley was a tenant in the new NZI building in Queen Street. On the 27th of August, 1871, fire broke out in the part of the building occupied by him. Months later, after a disastrous fire at the Coral Hall involving Haley, Haley's tenancy was terminated. He bitterly resented this. On the 22nd of January, 1872, eight revolver shots were fired into the Russell house. Haley was later caught and found guilty of a long list of crimes, including arson and attempted murder, and sentenced to life imprisonment. Cyrus Haley's story is fascinating when you look through the history of NZI. Unfortunately, now we don't have our customers shooting at us, um, but the reality is that uh, we do have customers that uh, set a light to properties uh, deliberately. With troops no longer present in Auckland after the transfer of the seat of government to Wellington, the city became entirely dependent on its own firefighting resources. It wasn't unusual in those days to, for an insurance company to actually either fund or create its own fire brigade. Metal plate fire marks were attached to the buildings to signify the insurer. As the fire brigade moved to those buildings that were on fire, if it wasn't a fire mark belonging to them, they turned around and walked away. NZI's 28-man team led by Captain Daldi was the finest of these. And in Auckland at this time, the threat of arson was as real as the inadequate firefighting equipment. You had fire brigades struggling to push the uh, manpower, the appliances or horse-drawn appliances, complete lack of water reticulation. Um, it, it created a challenging time. On June the 14th, 1872, South British Fire and Marine Insurance was established in the NZI building. Among the founders of NZI's major competitor was Captain Daldy. A major foreign focus on the British trade flag resulted in NZI branches being established worldwide. To follow the flag with the shipping that was going on in the world um, basically meant that uh, wherever a ship stopped we had some representation. The local companies had not exhibited the same uh, trust, the same strength, the same financial stability as we have had done over the last 40, 50, 60 years. The era of the sailing ship was coming to an end and new nautical commerce 
was booming around the world. And that was an opportunity for uh, insurance to actually be the first, I guess, recognised product that was being transported around the world, and NZI played its part in that. At 5.13 a.m. on April the 18th, 1906, San Francisco experienced one of the most disastrous earthquakes in history. The total destruction of most of the town was completed by a massive outbreak of fire. NZI had been operating a branch in the city since 1875 and was heavily committed. The tragedy had all the hallmarks of a disaster for the company. Over 25,000 buildings of every description were destroyed. Included was the loss of millions of cubic meters of Northland and Coromandel Cowrie from which San Francisco was built. The directors of NZI learned of the disaster via a series of telegrams. Immediate instruction was given and amidst the ruins of the company office, a sign appeared, prove your policies, we pay 100%. The integrity of NZI, confirmed by newspapers worldwide, was exemplary. So that really gave the backbone to a reliable insurance company that was there, that would pay, um, that had the strength and security that everyone had actually bought their products for. By 1905, the first motor cars were appearing on New Zealand roads. Conditions for motoring were primitive. The 80-mile journey from Auckland to Hamilton took a day, and to attempt to drive faster than a horse was regarded as reckless. Between 1906 and World War I, the telephone, the radio and electric power arrived and came into general use. The first signs of a new world order were in evidence. The colonial empire was weakening. Both NZI and South British Insurance had large and valuable interests in the Far East. But rising nationalism meant that foreign companies were increasingly unable to compete on even terms. Out of work. Out of work. Two quakes rocked New Zealand in the 1930s. The first came from offshore. There are not nearly enough jobs to go around. The worldwide depression that followed the Wall Street crash of 1929 diminished the volume of world trade and saw overseas prices for primary products fall to unprecedented levels. The insurance industry was particularly concerned with the general tendency to overinsure, the associated moral hazard and the savaging of property values. And on February the 3rd, 1931, New Zealand experienced its second shock and its worst natural disaster. The Napier earthquake hit in the middle of a normal working day. Almost every building was damaged, many were demolished, and the associated fire destroyed what was left. By evening, most of the city was in ashes. 283 people had died, and overland communications were totally destroyed. Following 31, there were new building regulations that were introduced. And they were in, the first lot was introduced in 1935. And in 35, we saw the first earthquake strengthened buildings in New Zealand and therefore um, a carry on in increasing that code to ensure that uh, future losses from earthquakes were mitigated. In 1934, with the commencement of scheduled air transport operations, NZI underwrote aviation risks and was one of the first to issue this type of policy. World War II had distinct phases and theatres of conflict. NZI made significant investment in war loans in New Zealand, the Commonwealth and USA. It underwrote the financial hazard of the war and directly assisted the 281 members of the staff on active service. Of these, 13 were killed, one was lost at sea and four were decorated for gallantry. The impact of nationalism in Asia, Africa and India increased after the war 
Diversification was the logical strategic conclusion, and with this came an increased involvement in a series of mergers. With these moves, NZI dramatically strengthened its position in Australia. One of the consequences of World War II, the Cold War and the space race which followed was a vast array of technological leaps that brought the modern world into being. It was becoming fundamentally apparent that size was a competitive necessity. The mergers in the 70s and 80s really came from a quite a dramatic change in insurance. Uh, companies were being put together, particularly uh, in Europe, uh, in, in, in Great Britain, and they were getting bigger groupings of companies. They were also starting to get the benefits of computerisation, which was just starting to make an impact. By 1982, NZI had a nationwide finance company in Australia. Following the merger of NZI and SBI in 1981, there was an expectation that growth would need to be more rapid. It felt it had to grow, grow internationally, and it saw banking as one of the next steps to move into. To do that, it had to import a whole lot of new management because it didn't have the basic ground schools, skills necessary as it did in the insurance business. Two quite separate NZI companies with diverging cultures now emerged, insurance and banking. It occurred at a time when the New Zealand market as did most world markets collapsed. 1987 saw the collapse of world markets and NZI Bank suffered as a result of that. And they expanded unfortunately in both Australia and New Zealand at a time, as we've just seen in recent times, when there was a splurge of credit, poor lending and ultimately that caught up with them. Another perspective is that the bank had travelled away from the company's core knowledge and traditional strengths. In 1988, General Accident had acquired a majority shareholding of 51%. The attraction to GA was the fact that NZI Corporation, which is what they purchased, had a very highly successful insurance company. NZI entered the 21st century able to offer the excellent financial security of a Standard & Poor's AA very strong rating. NZI adapted to the future, reinventing itself at a time when traditional demarcations were being blurred and when technology made geographical determinations redundant. The internet, uh, World Wide Web, enabled us to uh, list our services, our products, our benefits uh, as the world was moving towards more use of technology. Technology to the insurance industry enabled us to do business a lot uh, quicker. Uh, our speed to market of products, speed to market of being able to respond to customer needs. The history of NZI is as much about the intrinsic value of its people as it is about underwriting and investment. I think the sponsorship is growing legs as we grow each year and um, this year seems to have been a lot more um, dialogue around the actual word NZI, especially in the media, plus the brokers associating the public in Wellington especially. So it's just awesome, we love it, it's big to us. On behalf of all you NZI people out there, we love you. The people have a real passion for what they do and what NZI could do in the market, and that brings an energy with it. And, and I think those, both of those things are delivered through a very high level of professionalism in all of our interactions with our customers. In 2002, IAG acquired CGUs and NZI's Australia and New Zealand operations. At NZI, we've been insuring business for 150 years. Insurance is a long-term business. The task is to secure the future for generations of customers and employees alike, while meeting fresh challenges like factors associated with climate change. Sustainability issues to NZI are now just part and parcel of us and part and parcel of what we do. We, we think it's um, just our responsibility within society. We think it's our responsibility in terms of running a good business. We think it's our responsibility to ensure that um, we have this single planet that we leave in a good position for everyone else following us. 
the naming of IAGNZ's dramatic new head office at Fanshawe Street as the NZI Centre is a powerful metaphor for NZI's ability to recover, renew and lead. I think the new building in Fanshawe Street is a fantastic opportunity for us to demonstrate the fact that when we talk about sustainability and the issues surrounding it, here we are practising what we preach. It's a combination of the best of the old and the new coming together in harmony as NZI learns from past experience and innovates towards an exciting future. I think the future holds another 150 years of successful operation and also quite a number of changes, but two in particular. I think one of the first of those is in the technology side where we will see a much closer uh, alignment with our customers um, through B2B applications. And the second of those is a much more partnership role. So we will probably get a lot closer to our brokers' businesses and understand how they and we can achieve what we both want to achieve. I just see the future um, uh, with endless opportunities for staff. I see the future in terms of customers um, as us providing that stability and strength. Even through these hard economic times, we've demonstrated that through uh, depressions through wars um, and through disasters. So that really is the backbone of what insurance is about. And I just think our future is exciting. NZI has looked after New Zealanders for 150 years and intends to do so for another 150 years and more. NZI are part of this country's history and intend to continue this legacy well into the future.